Hey everybody, it's Jeannie and Jimmy. As you know, here in EMS Training, we're constantly trying to come up with new ways to keep you protected during this COVID-19 pandemic. Something that was brought to us by an awesome field paramedic, Kevin Schoff, was the use of a poncho for airway management. And by now you've probably seen or heard that the hospitals have gotten creative in coming up with ways to minimize aerosolization during the high-risk procedures like airway management. Some of the docs are even covering their patients with blankets and pieces of plastic, and some are using clear boxes to manage a patient's airway. But here in Anne County, we're going to place a poncho with every bag valve mask for you to use and hopefully minimize your exposure. So let's show you what that should look like. So the protective poncho will be placed with every bag valve mask. So wherever there's a bag valve mask, you should find a poncho. Now, it's also important to understand that any time a patient is being ventilated, we would like you to remember first and foremost is that you must have proper PPE. You must have your gloves, your glasses, your N95 mask, and your gown. Now, the poncho is going to be one more added protective layer for droplet protection. So when we go to apply the poncho, we're going to remove it from the packaging, and then we're going to take the front of the poncho, that's the part that has the opening in the hood, and we're going to start at the bottom of that poncho, we're going to bunch it up. We're going to place that underneath the shoulders and the head of the patient. We're going to tuck the hood underneath the patient's head. And then we're going to bring the back part of the poncho up and over top of the patient. So you can see our clinicians have applied the back valve mask for BBM ventilations. The clinician has gained access to inside of the poncho using the armholes of the poncho so that he can get a good two thumbs down technique on the bag valve mask. You can see our second clinician had the patient securely covered and is bagging or ventilating the patient from outside the car. Now, at some point, you may need to move into an advanced procedure. At guidance of MIMS and Dr. Wendell, we can move directly into a supraglottic airway or we can move into an ET tube. When you make that decision, you can see that our clinician is pushing the plastic down and out of the way, covering it around the patient's neck. She is going to set up her equipment to optimize for first-time success, whether that is a supraglottic airway or an ET tube. So in this situation, we're setting up for an ET tube. So you can see she has her video laryngoscopy and she has all of her devices set up on the chest. If there is a Lucas in place, then you may need to set up on the sides of the patient's head. So you can see she is covering her equipment with the protective poncho. And then she is going to switch positions with the BLS provider or the BLS clinician. And she is going to put her hands through the arm holes of the poncho, getting access to her equipment, placing the video laryngoscopy device, Visualizing her airway, passing the bougie again for first time ET success. Which you can see here from our second clinician is there is he is lifting the poncho. We call that tenting the poncho. That allows room to be made for the devices that we are putting in and out of the airway, like the bougie, the ET tube, or even the video laryngoscopy device. Once she visualized the tube passing, she's going to remove the bougie. Our second clinician is preparing the HEPA filter and the capnography device. The HEPA filter and capnography, along with the bag valve mask, are going to be connected to the ET tube. Maintaining that protective layer for droplet protection, and the patient's going to be ventilated. We're going to confirm ET placement by listening or oscillating for lung sounds, looking at capnography, and also feeling for compliance. Once the ET tube is confirmed, we're then going to put our tube holder in place, and we're going to secure that tube with a commercial device. Once that device is in place and the tube is secured, we're going to move into packaging the patient for transport. And the only thing that we want to make sure that you have in place right now is suction. So we want to run the suction along the side of the patient and make sure that a suction catheter is inside the plastic. For if the patient starts to vomit during transport, we want to be able to get that situation under control as fast as possible. And the patient's going to be ventilated like this all the way to the hospital. 
If you run into an emergency, you can easily spread it out, deal with whatever emergency, and then pack the patient back again. And I think it's important to understand that these are going to be issued by logistics, and they could be reordered through the operative IQ route. So thank you, and stay safe.